Is it crooked though? It looks crooked. Come here. Come help me talk about this. <laughs> hey, I'm Matt. This is 731 Woodworks. Today I'm going to show you how to build a litter box cabinet. Hey, if you're new here, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. Hit the bell icon next to subscribe. That way you'll be notified every time I upload new content. Charlie and I want to show you how to build this litter box cabinet. If you have cats, we don't, but a good friend of mine, Lucas Tankersley, I promise a shout out, uh, wanted one of these built, three of them actually, but this one is the first and uh, this one will be his. So let me show you what it's about. So if you have cats and you need a nice way to store your litter box out of sight, out of mind, this will also keep litter off your floor, or it should in theory. So what we got is a hole up top that the cat can jump through. Once he's in there, he can jump through that hole down to the litter box, which will be on the bottom. Uh, once this is closed up, uh, he's got his own privacy, so he's got his own bathroom. And when, he's, when his business is done, or her business is done, he jumps back up here. This should catch some litter and keep it off your floor, especially if you put like a little mat here or something to catch that. And then they can jump back out the exit hole and go on about their day. So this will keep uh, the litter uh, out of sight. And then it's also dual purpose. I'll show you what we got. We got this uh, rolling latch here just to keep everything snug so that the they don't push on it and get the door open easily. And then we have concealed hinges so that when it's closed, you don't see any hinges on the outside. On the top, we have uh, just a shelf up here. Uh, the customer wanted this stained, a dark walnut with a clear coat. And then the rest is a biscuit white. So we got a farmhouse type uh, paint scheme going on. But this shelf actually gives you some extra storage. Uh, if, if this is in a different room or whatever, if you want to keep your cat litter and stuff up there, you can. Uh, or, you know, you can use it as decoration if this is in a main part of your house. So this is a nice cabinet, uh, should last for many, many years, and uh, it's just an all-around uh, cool piece, and I was very happy and excited to be able to build it. I learned a lot building this cabinet, and uh, if you want to learn with me, check the video out. So what you're going to need to build this with is a half-inch plywood. That's what I used. That's what the shelves are made out of, the sides, the door, everything. Then I just used some one bys I ripped down. Uh, one by pine. This is also pine plywood, sanded CD plywood. It's like a third, fourth grade plywood. You're gonna have big holes and stuff in it. You don't want that. Get that sanded plywood, go ahead and spend that extra money. <clears throat> I did use some edge banding that, I, that you iron on uh, on the top here to hide the edge of this plywood door as well as on the front edges of both, both the fronts there. It just hides that edge of that plywood so you don't see that layered on there. And then on the, on the sides and stuff, you'll see the technique I used where I cut uh, rabbits in the, uh, these trim pieces and that overlaps on top of that plywood. Uh, it just gives it a little more structure and it also provides a little more aesthetic look. The shelf is inset so that you don't actually have to have a handle out here. If you want to put a handle on there, you can, but you don't have to have it because you have that inset you can just pull. Think of anything else you need to know about this cabinet? If you had a cat, what would you want to know about the cat? How big it is? Bring me Charlie. If you haven't met Charlie, there's a video, a few videos back. You can go back where we introduced her. This is Charlie. She's an Italian Greyhound. Coat is over there crying. Uh, just for size, Charlie is about five pounds. Uh, so if your cat is about this size, we don't have cats. Uh, not really a cat person. And uh, Zeus has a deep hatred for cats. So you can see Charlie inside, inside the cabinet. Plenty of room in there. Uh, she's about, I don't know, how tall are you, little girl? She's about 14 inches tall or so, maybe. Maybe 12, 14 inches tall. So once your litter box is in there, your little cat should have plenty of, uh, any medium sized cat should have plenty of room for this size. If you wanted to make it bigger, you could. It's 35 inches tall, and uh, these are equally divided. A lot of the construction used on this is pocket holes and brad nails, so that's all you're going to need. If you don't have a pocket hole jig, I highly recommend the Craig K5, that's what I'm using. If you don't want to spend the $120, $130 for a Craig K5, for $40 you can get the R3. 
First thing I gotta do for this build is uh, put a new saw blade on. I bought a Diablo 62 saw blade. This thing cuts that plywood very, very smooth. I highly recommend this. There'll be a link in the description of this saw blade if you want. I'm also using a Craig rip cut. Uh, this helps you rip up to 24 inch strips off of plywood. And uh, you'll see me laying this half inch sheet of plywood up there. And then I use that Craig rip cut. This helps. Now, this rip cut is really worth the money. I think it was $40. Uh, it helps when I'm making these long rips and it keeps everything nice and square. Makes it a whole lot more manageable than trying to rip that on the table saw. Basically what you got is an edge guide and then you just hold that on the edge as you uh, push the saw down. It, it works really well. Next thing I do is cut my shelves sides, back and door length using the jigsaw and a straight edge. Then of course pocket holes. This is the back. I put four pocket holes on each side. What I've got going is I've got both sides cut out. I've got the back cut out and I've got the bottom shelf and the middle shelf cut out. I don't have the top shelf cut out yet because I'm only using uh, one sheet of plywood so far and I don't have any I haven't cut the other sheet, so. So this is just a piece of one by. I've cut it just shy of a quarter of an inch wide, thick this way, and it's a half inch this way. So what I like to do is I take some glue and brad nails and I'll glue it and bra glue it, and then I'll stick a couple of brad nails in there, come back and putty those uh, brad nail holes later. That way, when you open the door, you're not looking at the edge of plywood you're looking at the edge of a, of a wood it just makes it look cleaner keeping that in mind when you cut the shelf you'll need to cut it however thick this is short so this is a little over 3 16 of an inch between 3 16 and a quarter so that's what i cut this shy it's about 20 uh, 21 and three quarters just barely over 21 and three quarters of an inch this way so what i'm going to do now is assemble everything I wanted to get two shelves cut out because I don't have a front on this cabinet because it's going to be a door there. So I wanted something to give me some stability before I just put the, you know, if you attach the back to the two sides, then the two sides are just going to do this. So with these shelves inset uh, on the bottom and the top and the middle, that's going to give us uh, plenty of stability to work with it. And what I got to do first is on this middle shelf, I'm going to attach this edge banding. And then I'm going to cut a hole in here so that the little cat can jump through there and get down to the bottom. Oh yeah. So I've got pocket holes in here. I'm going to put two that go into the back of the, the box. Three on each side. That should be plenty to hold it in there. I mean, you're not holding more than 20 pounds on a cat. You know, 20, 25 for a big cat. So anything more than that, you know, I, it, it'll still hold, you know, quite a bit of weight but uh, for what we're building this for cat or you know different things like that it should be plenty to hold that up laying out our hole for the cat to jump through on the middle shelf this is what i come up with and i'm assuming this is going to be big enough i don't own a cat and haven't had a cat in years but what i decided to do is this is the back and then this is your two sides so I'm gonna come off the back three inches. That way my pocket hole screws back there. I don't have to cut into those. That gives me plenty of room for that. And then on the front side here, that gives me plenty of room for the, the cat. When you jump through the front door hole, he can land. He has plenty, you know, he has uh, almost 12 inches here to land on before this other hole. So what I did was I measured three inches and 11 inches. That gives us an eight inch hole this way. And then it's four and a half inches from each side but that gives us a, a 10 inch hole uh, this way. If you want your hole bigger or smaller there, feel free to adjust this any way you, need, you uh, see fit. So I just made two marks so I can uh, line those two marks up with a straight edge. I mark there, same thing down here. And again on each side, and all I'm gonna do is take a, uh, a drill and drill a hole for to start my bit. And then I'm gonna use a jigsaw to cut that square out so this will be our cutout and so we got you know four and a half inches on each side three on the back and 12 on the front 
and then that allows plenty of room for the cat to, to be able to walk around. Or So first thing I do is cut a hole in that middle shelf. I cut that hole out. I did use a quarter inch round over bit in that hole to smooth those edges out on both sides. I attach the back to one side and then I place the shelf in there after I sanded everything smooth on that shelf. Go ahead and place that in halfway and attach it with pocket holes. And then I can just lay it over and attach the other side to, with the pocket holes to the back into that shelf. Failed to mention that I did cut the bottom shelf three quarters of an inch shorter than the total depth of the cabinet so that I could place an inch and a half strip across there, inch and a half wide by three quarters of an inch thick. So here you have a basic frame set out. You can see where I put the quarter inch strips on the front of that middle shelf to hide that edge of that plywood. So you see here I'm ripping, I've, I've ripped an inch and a half wide strips and I'm gonna cut quarter inch uh, thick pieces off of that. And then this piece I'm cutting out, uh, cut a rabbit out of it, and then I'm cutting out notches, and I'll show you what I'll do with that next. So let me explain what I'm doing. The reason I haven't put the top shelf in is because it's gonna be stained, and I'm gonna stain it a dark walnut, and the rest of this is gonna be painted. So it kinda gives a two-tone farmhouse look. But before I do that, I'm not ready to paint yet because I haven't trimmed this out. You could absolutely leave this as a blank box if that's what you wanted to do. But this one, what I did was took some one bys. I went and bought some one bys. Uh, these are one by sixes. I ripped them an inch and a half wide, and then I cut a quarter inch strip off that inch and a half, two quarter inch strips actually is what you get out of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little detail to this box. So I'm gonna uh, glue and brad nail this here. And then those pieces I just showed you, I was time lapsing them. It was an L shape first, and then I notched out this so that these two pieces will overlap. Let me show you why. They're actually going to overlap like this. And so what I wanted was to cover the top of that plywood. And how I'm going to do that is I just cut a rabbit. They call this a rabbit cut. Cut a rabbit out of this a half inch wide and about a half inch deep. And that gives, that's going to serve two purposes. It's going to cover the top of the plywood and then you're going to have this wood edge on top. And it's also, it gives me a, the strip running horizontally here or my rail and then these are my styles. And all this should fit together nice. And then once we have all this glued and tacked on, it creates a nice look. And then I'm going to put one on the back, quarter inch strip, and then a quarter inch strip across the bottom, uh, and then one in the middle. And that way we'll have, it'll look, you know, just give us some detail, you know, that way it kind of stands out a little bit and it's not just plain. So that's what we're going to do here. I've got uh, these two pieces cut out for the tops and then these two here, so I've still got to cut out. But brad nails and glue is all it'll take to hold that on. Then I'll come back and putty those holes. I just attach these trim pieces with glue and brad nails. These brad nails are 5 8 inch long. And I just set my brad nailer so it doesn't drive them all the way through. So you just test that a couple of pieces and then start attaching. So for each side of the door, I use the one by material. And I ripped it out a rabbit so that it fits um, a half inch deep by one inch wide so that it fits over that door and hides the edge of the door. Putty those brad nails after I'm done and then I'll sand that smooth later. I got to drill the hole in my, my door, so I laid it out and I just drilled it with 3 8 inch drill bit and then I cut it out very carefully with that jigsaw. Once that's done, I'll uh, use a sander, uh, just kind of knock the rough edges off and then I will take a quarter inch roundover bit and round over the uh, on both sides and then I'll sand it down real good.
The hole in the front door is eight inches by eight inches. And then I come back and putty all the brad nail holes from the side of the frame. While that's drying, I put this edge banding on. This is an iron on edge banding. I got this at Lowe's. You can get it on Amazon, uh, different places. Uh, this stuff works really well. It sticks really well and it'll, it'll be there. It's very difficult to, to get off once it's actually stuck. Just make sure you put plenty of pressure here. Get it plenty hot and then come back after you get it ironed on with a, with a round something. This is a, like a piece of steel and I just rolled it and rolled any air bubbles out. Then I'll come back and sand that putty after it's dry. Now it's time for paint. I put uh, one coat of stain blocking primer on, and then after this dry, I go with two coats of biscuit white. That's the top shelf, stained Minwax Dark Walnut. And then after that's dry for 24 hours, two coats of General Finishes Armor Steel. Now it's time to attach the doors. These are just flush mount uh, concealed hinges. Uh, get those on there, get everything screwed in. Once that's done, I put a roll latch on the other side just to help everything stay secure when the door's shut. I've got uh, this one pretty much complete. I got to put that uh, top shelf in after it dries. It's got some clear coat on it right now. But it's got concealed hinges, so you're not going to see them from the outside. A little roll latch here so that whenever you shut it, it's going to be latched so that the little putty cat can't push it open. Nice smooth hinges. So he can jump through there, then down into his uh, litter box there and do his business. There's your top shelf, that dark brown. It's got a clear coat and it's gonna dry. After the door's on, time to attach that top shelf. It's very simple, I just used a, my um, combination square. Make sure that I have one inch of space between the top, top of the cabinet and the top of the shelf. So I just, uh, it gives me a little edge all the way around. I think it looks a little nicer. It gives it a little detail. product stick around and you see all these pictures of the finished product this is uh, gonna be a very nice piece for someone who has cats if you're gonna build this let me know in the comments if you have any questions I'd appreciate any feedback on this video go ahead and drop it down below